It seems like even Democrats are starting to get tired of Hillary Clinton's blame tour. Now, recently, according to The Hill, former candidate, uh, the former candidate had been going around and basically throwing shade at the DNC, blaming them, along with James Comey, Russia, Bernie Sanders, Jill Stein, and <clears throat> voters for not being sufficiently loyal enough for her embarrassing loss against Donald Trump. And trust me, that's super embarrassing. Yeah, of course, you'd want to blame everybody else. But anyway, many prominent Democrats are now finally saying, all right, Hillary, enough already. Just own up to it and shut up and stop blaming us. Now, The Hill recently interviewed about a dozen Democrats about Hillary Clinton's remarks, including many staunch Clinton supporters and former aides. So this isn't coming from, you know, the, the Bernie Sanders progressive wing. No, this is her own staff and her own aides and people who were like, Hillary, 2016, yay, break the glass ceiling stronger together, blah, blah, blah. Well, now they're saying, shut up, Hillary. Just enough, enough. Now, they said that they understood the need for Clinton to explain what happened in the election. Okay. And many also empathized with Clinton's anger over FBI Director James Comey's handling of a probe into her private email server. Now, look, that point alone, I actually do agree with that. You want to be mad at Comey for that. Okay, be mad because you know what? Even though it did not have nearly as big of an effect as the DNC and as Hillary Clinton are playing it out to be, I actually believe that it had a negligible effect on the election. It was still bullshit. He was out there saying, the FBI is going to look into this uh, email thing again. When actually, no, they weren't. They were not actually going to open, reopen the case. But the media went crazy with the right-wing media, all that stuff. So I can understand why she would be angry about that. Look, even we reported on that, and I was wrong, right? I actually reported falsely. Oh, hey, look, they're gonna, they might uh, reopen this case. Oh, it turns out, no, that was bullshit. And we fell for it. And so, look, even I'm kind of pissed. But anyway, now they also said, the staff did, hey, this needs to stop. This bullshit needs to stop quote good god what is she doing one long a uh, long time aide wondered after watching clinton at the recode conference on wednesday she is apparently still really really angry i mean we all are the election was stolen from her and that's how she feels okay ag again that's another fair point despite all the things the campaign did wrong and trust me they did a lot <laughs> we have not been shy about pointing out the ridiculously stupid things the Hillary Clinton campaign had done. Um, the Electoral College, look, he did kind of steal the election a little bit. Um, now, it's because, of course, the way our system is. She's like the third president to have the Electoral College say, even though you won the popular vote, the way the Electoral College is set up, the other guy wins. Now, he continues, uh, this, this aide continues, but to go up there and publicly again and again and again and talk about it and then blame the DNC, it's not helpful to Democrats. It's not helpful to the country. And I don't think it's helpful to her. That's again, that's pretty fair. Now it turns out that of, of, of anyone, former Obama aides are actually the ones with the most harshest critiques. Quote, uh, this is former senior aide to Obama. If she is trying to come across as the leader for the angry movement of what happened in 2016, then she's achieving it. But the part of the problem she had was that she didn't have a vision for the Democratic Party. And she now needs to take a break and let others come to the forefront. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what they need to do. Hillary Clinton needs to go away. I don't care what she does. Just out of politics. You've been in politics long enough. It's time to just... Go home, relax, chill out, do something, spend time with your grandkids, and let somebody else lead the party. In fact, I have somebody who would be a perfect fit. Uh, uh, he happens to be a very, very popular senator from Vermont who would love to take that leadership position of the party. In fact, I think a lot of people in the party and outside the party are still looking to him for that leadership. So problem solved. He's already there. He's already there. He's already the leader. <laughs> Now, again, her campaign, there was major problems with her campaign, okay? She had no vision, but basically she considered herself, and I think a lot of people consider her campaign, the Titanic. 
Hey, well, you can't sink the Titanic. Can't do it. Is there a is 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 there a, a an, an, ice, an iceberg? We'll we're, we'll run right into that motherfucker. That's what we're gonna do. Iceberg dead ahead. Steer right into that shit. And guess what? They sunk. <laughs> the band kept playing as they sunk on election night. And unfortunately, they brought the whole country down with it. It was hubris that sunk the campaign. Um, and again, they did not take Donald Trump seriously as a serious threat. And look, I started out not treating Donald Trump as a serious threat. And then I realized, oh shit, he's a serious threat. He could actually win this. And guess what? I was right. We were all right when we said, if you nominate Hillary Clinton, you will lose. So now these Democrats, at least now they realize, hey man, we need a different leader. We need a different face. We need somebody else to rally around. Not her. Anybody but her. Almost anybody but her. Now again, I know somebody who's perfect for that position. Somebody who's popular with 80% of Democrats uh, and a lot of independents, even some Republicans, who happens to be the most popular politician in America. But hey, what do I know? What do I know? Now, that for uh, that former Obama aide actually had to say more about leaders. He said, Clinton's criticism of the DNC can make it tougher for some of these new leaders to come forward. Quote, it's hard to do, uh, hard to do that when you have the former nominee out there in a newsy, aggressive manner. The former Obama aide said, uh, longtime aides and advisors say that she will not run for public office and that she feels liberated to finally speak her mind. Quote, she's saying the, the same stuff that she would say on a phone call with me, said one former aide who worked on the 2016 campaign. And I think she'll continue to have a national dialogue on what needs to be fixed. But again, I wouldn't have as much of a problem out there if she was actually talking about what she did wrong and actually how to fix it, like how to reach out to people in the Rust Belt, how to reach out to people who are economically disadvantaged. I would have no problem with that or, you know, reaching out and saying, hey, you know, we have this issue with money in politics. I know I took a lot of super PAC money, but I actually really want to get rid of it because it turns out even with all the super PAC money in the world, you can't win on a the rich are awesome message or no message at all. But again, she's not doing that. She had no vision, no message, and she's not working to fix anything. And that is the big problem here. Um, that's why some Democrats are now saying that she is better off just going home. And I agree with that. Uh, one Democratic strategist named Brad Bannon said, quote, I'm not sure there's any political strategy here in this blame tour. It sounds to me more like a personal strategy. Complaining about an outcome and blaming everyone else is not a good political strategy, Bannon added. Jamal Simmons, a Democratic strategist, acknowledged some frustration among Democrats over Clinton's remarks. Quote, some people I know are just frustrated that it's happening. She is a national hero, I wouldn't go that far, and a great public servant and has the right to be upset. But Simmons added that if she's going to discuss the loss, it would be nice to hear a little bit more about the things she did wrong, which I believe mattered more than what she has discussed. Again, because she doesn't think that she did anything wrong. She was the Titanic. The ti You can't sink this boat. You can't sink this boat. I did nothing wrong. It was, it was Comey. It was the Russians. It was nothing that I did. It wasn't the fact that I didn't campaign in Michigan. Despite campaign aides in Michigan or campaign operatives in Michigan begging her to put time and resources into Michigan, which could have been a win uh, winnable race. She didn't do it. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, same thing. She refused to go to, where did she go? She instead went to try to court the Mitt Romney, Jeb Bush voters, the moderate Republicans. What a ridiculous strategy. As I showed you in a, a, a different video, that those voters reliably went for Republicans and they reliably went for Donald Trump. There was no switching them to vote for Hillary Clinton. Now, Simmons, he has an important uh, point of view, and I think it's really interesting here. Now, he's, he worked for Al Gore. Now, he said that he's intimately familiar with the mourning that takes place after a narrow loss, particularly one in many ways that's stolen. Quote, when Al Gore lost the election, he went to Europe, gained weight, and grew a beard. He walked away, and there's something to that. That's his message. 
Hillary, just walk away. I don't care what you do. Just go. Al Gore did it. And by the way, I kind of disagree that Al Gore should have walked away. Uh, I think if he had pushed it up for a recount in Florida, it's possible that we would have had eight years of Al Gore instead of George W. Bush and all the disaster that came along with it. But And there are several studies that suggest that that might have also been the case if he had actually fought for it. So, But look, on the main point, I do agree with him about Hillary Clinton. She needs to stop this blame tour and go do something else. And if she insists on being in the public eye, which she's a Clinton, and this whole thing is about, hey, look at me, I'm still relevant, I'm a Clinton. Well, if you're going to do that, do something useful. Why don't you go talk about, I don't know, uh, Flint. I mean, you made, you made a big deal about Flint uh, when you were in Michigan during the campaign against Bernie Sanders. And you never brought it up again. Well, Flint's still happening. People are still drinking poison water in Flint. And they're still being asked to pay for it. Go to Flint! Talk about it! Use your platform! But it shows that you don't care about that issue. Or any other issue. The issue, for example, of poverty. Or money in politics. You said you wanted to... Uh, that money in politics was so bad that you wanted to overturn Citizens United. Why aren't you out, talking to, uh, out there talking about it? You're not because you never really cared about any of these issues. And all of the voters, they saw, they saw right through you. And that's why they didn't support them. That's why they didn't support you during the campaign. That's why they don't support you now. That's why you're even more unpopular than Donald Trump. The most unpopular president after his first hundred days. And during his first hundred days. Man, if you're not going to make a positive contribution, then get the hell out. Get out of the way already and take your ideology of neoliberal central, uh, centrism with you. Because all you're doing right now by staying around is driving people away from the Democratic Party. If anybody is hurting the party, it's you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.